if we select an appropriate size of cable that will be connecting from the source going to the load, this size of cable should be able to carry continuously under the condition of use without exceeding its temperature rating. This is very important. The Washington Makoka Enterprises. Good day, everyone. Today's lesson is going to be on selection of cable or cable size. Um, the whole idea about this topic is going to give you an insight and a guide on how to perform certain calculations. And after doing the calculation, how do we select the appropriate size of cable for our different applications? Um, supposing we have a load from one end and then we have source of um, our source in another end. So we will have power that is being pulled by the load from the source going to the load. As such, we require a suitable size of conductor or a suitable size of cable that will be able to carry that amount of current leaving from the source going to the load. This is very important. And it will not only be able to carry the amount of current that is leaving from the source going to the load at normal condition, but we'll be able to carry that an amount of current that is leaving from the source going to the load at an abnormal condition, that is during temperature rise before the protective device will trip or will clear that particular fault is very important. If you've not subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to our channel, do share our channel, and then also um, like as well. If you have any comments, put it in the comment below. So anytime we will be able to address your comments. And if you have any uh, suggestion to be made, or probably you have any uh, video or any lessons that you want us to talk about, just put it in the comment below and we will address them accordingly. I will share my screen now. So we dive straight to This topic is selection of cables. So we'll be referencing to Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation Regulation Electricity Wiring Code 2016. And also we'll be referencing as well to BS 7671 IEEE Regulation 17 edition. We'll move to the first point. Conductor size is selected to meet ampacity voltage drop and short circuit criteria. It's very important. So if we size our conductor size, it should be able to meet the ampacity, the voltage drop and the short circuit criteria. So we will note, ampacity is defined by National Electricity Code or NEC as the maximum current in amps or in amperes that a conductor can carry continuously under the condition of use without exceeding its temperature rating. It's very important. Like I did mention, if we select an appropriate size of cable that will be connecting from the source going to the load, this size of cable should be able to carry continuously under the condition of use without exceeding its temperature rating. It's very important. There's one more definition again as per Doha Cables. Doha Cables is a manufacturing company in Qatar that produces or manufacture cables. It defines cable ampacity as, or current carrying capacity is defined as the continuous maximum current a cable can carry at a max and its maximum operating temperature. So you see both definitions, they all align and they are all geared or centered at a point where we get to understand that that size of cable that we select for our circuit should be able to withstand an amount of current continuously without exceeding its temperature or operating temperature. We'll move to the next slide. For three phase, we have power, which is equal to square root of three, multiplied by voltage, multiplied by current, multiplied by power factor. So if we have to look for the current now, which is current IB, in this case is a design current, which will be equal to power divided by 
square root of 3 multiplied by voltage multiplied by the power factor. So we will now look for the corrected load current. So our IB in this case, so after we've done the calculation of our current IB, which is a design current, we now move forward now to look for the derating current so that we have our corrected load current. So our corrected load current now is going to be multiplied by certain derating factors or diversity factors. So in this case now, we'll be talking of, um, or taking in account, into account certain derating factors such as um, environmental factors, uh, spatial condition of installation and grouping factors. So when we talk of environmental factors, we might be talking of um, the heat that is dissipated and all that. So when we talk of a special condition, it should be installed probably under the ground, um, overhead, or exposed in air and all that. So we have grouping factors as well, etc. So it does not end at that level. So depending on where and how the installation is being carried out. Also takes into account the type of load. So the type of load could be either continuous or non-continuous load. So we talked of uh, continuous loads are said to be are said to run or operate for three hours and more or above, and often use 125% in design calculations. So after having our current or the design current now, we will now be able now to select our size of protective device, our site of uh, cable. After having the size of cable, now we move forward now to calculate the voltage drop and to see if it um, it's less than the maximum permissible voltage drop as per a regulation. So we have voltage drop, which is equal to two multiplied by MV slash A slash M multiplied by current times length divided by 1000 multiplied by the number of runs of cable. This is for single phase. So for three phase, we are going to have a square root of three on this side. So we have MV slash A slash M, which is a voltage per ampere per meters, which is um, resistance multiplied by cos phi plus the reactance multiplied by sine phi. And then we have um, the current, which is our current in amps, which is IB, the length L, which is the length of the cable from the source to the load in meters. The N is the number of runs of cable. So we will now move to our next slide. The MV here, yeah, MV slash A slash M, this value will be taken from our table, either from the cable manufacturer catalog or probably from um, IEEE regulation. We can also find it there, or probably from uh, IET, International Electrotechnical Commission, IEC. So we'll now move to the next slide. After calculation of the voltage drop, it should be less than the maximum permissible voltage drop, then the selected value is okay. But if it is greater than the maximum permissible voltage drop, we will have to select a higher value of cable, then again compute it back again and make sure that it is less than the maximum permissible voltage drop. If it is again still greater than, and then some special cases whereby we have um, selected our, our cross-sectional area of the cable is 300 square mm. Uh, for us to move further, it will be so large or so big to start carrying installation with uh, maybe 400 square mm of cable is too big. And as well as maybe it will require uh, more time to install and probably the cable tray uh, 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 installation of different cables as well as the 400 the size of cable tray will not be able to accommodate or might face some difficulties. And then when it comes to maintenance and all that. So in that case, we will now limit it at 300 square mm. So when we have our voltage drop that still exceeds the maximum permissible voltage drop now, in this case, we will have to double the cable size in order to reduce the voltage drop to a satisfactory value. It's very important. So we have a power circuit, which is 5%. And wire for lighting circuit is 3% as per BS, the British standard. While for, as per Karama, which is 4% for power and 3% for lighting circuit. 
So I'll give an example. We'll drive through this example so we get to understand exactly how to do or perform this calculation. An example, assuming we have a load of 140 kilowatts with a voltage of three phase 415 volt distance from the source to the load, which is 10 meters. That is the cable that is leaving from the source or the distance from the source going to the load will be 10 meters. And the power factor is 0 0.85. Okay, method of installation of cable is underground pipe or trench. It is indoor, either in the trench or underground, whatever. So we have to calculate now the size of cable for that application. The first step, we have to look for the current, which is a design current. So current will be equal to the power divided by square root of three, multiplied by voltage, multiplied by the power factor. So we now compute, we have a power of 140, we multiply by 1000 since we have our power in kilowatts. So multiply by 1000 divided by square root of three, multiply by voltage, which is 415, as we can see here, then multiply by 0 0.85, which is a power factor, which is mentioned here. So when we compute, we have our value, which is IB, will be equal to 229.14 amps. This is a design current. So now, over current protection consideration of current will be, we'll now have a new value, which is IN, which will be equal to 125% multiplied by IB, which is a design current. So when we compute that, we are going to have 286.4 amps. So move to the next slide. Current carrying capacity selected of selected cable will be taken from reference tables. So we will go now to Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation Regulation table to select our size of cable, as you can see here. So we selected four core 240 square mm cable, which is XLPE copper cable plus one core of 120 square mm. PVC E double C. So when we go to our Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation regulation, take you there now. We have this. So we'll go to the tables. We have some tables. Okay. So if you go from the top. So what happened is when you go, you open from here, we'll see the table of comp content, which is a preface. We'll have tables, which is in page 80. So we'll go to page 80 and then start looking the tables. From there, we'll be able to identify what we are looking for. So we had to select our size of cable, which is 240 square mm. Looking at our size of the, the cables, uh, the, the value of current that we have was 229. So when we multiply by 125%, we had 286.4. So we go now to our catalog. Maximum current, this is not what we're looking for. We look now to, we'll go to Table 11, we are going to find what we are looking for. This is table 10, which is um, PVC insulated, and then we have XFPE insulated. So our cable uh, will be XFPE insulated. So we come now to our rated current, which is laid directly in the ground. This is not our, our question. If you look at the question keenly, you notice that we have it installed on the ground pipe or trench. So we go now to on the ground pipe or trench, which is this. This is the point where we are focusing on. So if we fall here, we'll get look at our value, which is our value of current now is uh, 286.4. So we go now, we'll have 266, so it's more than this, 286.4, we will now select 
308. So our corresponding cross-sectional area of the cable now will be 240 square mm. So this is how we perform the calculation and then did our selection of the cable that is suitable for that application. So we'll now move further. This is the size we selected. And then how did we come to select the size of um, at conductor? So normally when we have our cross-sectional area of the cable, which is uh, greater than 35 square mm or 30 square, 35 mm squared. So what we do is we use the cross-sectional area of the cable divided by two, which is going to be the cross-sectional area of the, the, the conductor will be for the head. So the head conductor will be the cross-sectional area of the cable divided by two. So if we go back again to our catalog, we'll now find We'll go and then we see the yeah, minimum size of cable continuity conductors and bonding leads. So if we have 240 square mm, we are going to select a cross-sectional area of at continuity conductor in square mm will be 120 square mm. So this is how we did our calculation and we landed at a different selection. So we'll now move to the next slide now to calculate the voltage drop. So voltage drop now will be equal to IB multiplied by MV slash A slash M multiplied by the length of conductor divided by 1000 multiplied by number of runs of the cables. So we, we should be equal to, we had our IB value, which is 229.14 multiplied by 0 0.2. So this 0 0.2 will be taken now from the catalog as well. The size of cable we selected was 240 square mm so this is the voltage drop per meter per per ampere per meter which we selected our cross-sectional area of cable as 240 so the value will be 0 0.2 so we now come back now to our computation we put here now 0 0.2 multiplied by the length the length which is 10 10 meters and then we divide it by 1000 multiply by one, which is or just one run. So if we compute, we are going to have 4.58 volt. Percentage voltage drop now, when we compute, we have 1.1%. So it's less than the maximum permissible voltage drop, which is very important. So if it is less than this, the maximum permissible voltage drop, there we can conclude that the size of cable we selected, which is four core, 240 square mm XLPE copper cable is suitable for that application because it is less than the maximum permissible voltage drop as we saw in our voltage drop calculation. This is the XLPE cable. So like I did mention, this video is um, just to give us a guide and to have an understanding on how to do calculation to end up selecting an appropriate size of cable for uh, different wirings, which is very important. And then also what are the different parameters we take into consideration and then how to look at the code, to go through Karama rules and regulation, go to the different tables, which you selected on table 11, which we had to select the size of cable. We select the, 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 the different parameters that will be used for our different calculations, which is very important. So um, like I did mention, it just to give us an insight and an understanding to know exactly how to perform calculations to derive to the size of cable to be selected for a different uh, application, which is very important. Thanks for watching. Until then, you're watching Makoge Enterprises. Do like, share, and subscribe. And also do turn up the notification button so anytime we upload a new video, you're going to be notified.